John Hall will kick it off for the Badgers. Two teams uh, really looking to get their season headed in the right direction. And that does not mean to imply that Stanford's has not, with a 2-0 start, their best in the last nine years. But uh, they still are a team with something to prove. They've beaten San Jose State, a team that on paper you figure they should would beat. And then a Utah team that is in something of a rebuilding year. This one, a little bit more for real. This is headed for Dunn. Big hop. He handles it at the goal line. Back to the five behind a wall of blockers, but almost too much of a wall, and he stopped at the 14-yard line. That broke down Scott Young on the tackle on special teams for the Badgers. Let's take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Stanford with Mark Butterfield at quarterback, Anthony Bookman, the running back, with Adam Salina getting a call, 260 pounds. He'll share time with Greg Camella. Harris Manning, who is the big play guy, and the Cardinal would love to get him isolated on one of the inexperienced cornerbacks of Wisconsin with Bucky Waters, Gaynor, Badger, and Parks along the offensive line. Butterfield will put it up on first down, looking for a screen, and threw it away as the screen broke down. Well read. Brian Jurowitz was putting the pressure on, but the Badgers read that screen extremely well. Take a look at the defense for Wisconsin. Manecki is one of the key players ex with experience with Jurowitz. Then Eric, uh, Pete Monty rather, on the defensive at the linebacker position with a lot of experience at the linebacker spot too. The secondary, however, very inexperienced. Here's Brooklyn on a sweep at the 15 to 20 to the 25 yard line. He'll be close to a first down and I believe he got it. That's a little something, Barry, that Stanford didn't show a lot of last week, and that is actually sweeping with Bookman instead of running him off tackle, getting him outside. And they did that on that play, and it looks like they did pick up the first down. You see his numbers from last, the, the last two ball games, the first two games of the season, 246 yards in two games, Barry. First down, Cardinal with a 25, short drop. Butterfield throwing for the tight end, almost intercepted that time by Pete Monty, who had his hands on it, and six points if he got it. You're not kidding. Had Monty been able to pick that one off, there was nothing but the end zone in front of him. Butterfield doesn't make a real good read here. He thinks he's got the tight end free here. He's got another receiver out further to his right. He throws the ball behind 87 Clark behind him, and that allows Monty to get in there. You also see the pressure on Butterfield by number 42, Tarek Salah. Ball was tipped, I believe, by one of the interior linemen. Here's Bookman again, not much, at the right side, might have gotten a yard. Here's a look at Mark Butterfield out of Antioch, just across the bay here, where he played his high school ball. Family and friends and attendance at every Stanford game. Third down now and nine for the Cardinals. Single setback, three wideouts. Five-step drop, looking deep, through into traffic. Mark Harris had no chance at all. Ill-conceived pass that time. Well, he threw into too deep coverage that time. He had a receiver trying to draw the defensive back that was underneath up, but it didn't happen. They were playing for the deep route, and Butterfield probably should not have thrown that one, as you said, Barry. So the Cardinal will punt it away. Deep man for the Badgers is going to be Aaron Stecker. Stands right now at about the 30-yard line. Punter for the Cardinal, Kevin Miller. Nine-man front, eight-man front shown by Wisconsin. Short kick. And it's going to hit at the 42, take a Wisconsin bounce, and go out of bounds to the 44-yard line. So the Badgers with great field position on their first possession. 29-yard punt by Miller, one he would like to have back. Let's take a look at the Wisconsin offense brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Carl McCullough. He is just a sophomore, an outstanding running back, redshirted last year. You're going to see a lot of him this afternoon. Tony Simmons, he's the deep threat. He is to Wisconsin what Brian Manning is to Stanford. Steve Stark, along with Jerry Wunsch, are the two experienced offensive linemen, but this is an inexperienced unit up front. McCullough gets the call and gets about two, maybe three, to the 47. Chris Draft on the tackle. 
Stanford's defense with Pete Swanson, the most experienced there. Kylie Wong, just a sophomore, but played a lot last year. Mike Hall, the only fifth-year senior on the starting unit for Stanford with Batson and Haskins and linebackers. And Claudia Ellis, interesting story, last year just frankly didn't look like he could play a lick. He's out there having fun. He likes the new coaches, and he's responding. Give it this time to McCullough again, left side, nothing doing. McCullough stopped after a gain of, after a loss, I should say, of maybe two yards. We'll give all the credit to 42, Brian Batson, the outside linebacker, who was fighting off the block of number 32, Cantrell, the fullback. Batson strung it out, and that allowed his guys from the inside, his teammates, to come on in and make the play. So a great job by Brian Batson. Stanford will come with a nickel defense now on third down. They want to make Wisconsin throw the football. Exactly. That's This is the situation they want because they know that Wisconsin can put you at their mercy if they have it second and short. They have set for the Badgers as the Cardinal used in the third and long situation. The Cardinal throws blitz, comes with five. Bevel throws, too tall, intended for Tony Simmons. Images of one another in every respect so far in this ballgame. Low snap, fielded on a hop and almost blocked by Ellis. Alexander, good job to get it away. Dunn has to retreat to his own eight. Now he's got room at the 10, waiting for a block, doesn't get it, steps out at the 18-yard line. And we've got a timeout with 12-17 remaining first quarter. Look at the scoreboard, shows Stanford nothing, Wisconsin nothing. We'll be back. Split backs on first down as the Cardinals start the 18. Brooklyn right side. Well defended that time, might have lost a couple. Pete Monty, the first man to it. Monty, very active so far in this ballgame. Yeah, Monty makes the tackle, but 34 Leonard Taylor, the strong safety, is the man who came up and turned the play in and allowed Monty to get all the glory. See, we put the camera on Monty and talk about the great tackle he made, but it was number 34 Leonard Taylor, the guy who got dirty and made it happen for him. Loss of two, it's going to be second and 12. Butterfield, straight back. Goes for the tight end. Clark makes the catch the 30-yard line. Clark did not get a ball thrown to him last week. Well, you know, Stanford really likes Clark. He's a big guy, goes 6'5", 260, 260 for a tight end. And you saw that he can run down the field. That's about a 15-yard pickup out there. You see the release inside, bottom of your screen, 87 Clark. Nice, strong throw by Butterfield as he gets hit. Clark leaves his feet to pick up the first down. Clark's first catch as a Stanford Cardinal out of Ricks Junior College. Three wideouts in the ballgame now for the Cardinal. Single setback. Greg Camella gets the call not to do it. Great job by Tarek Soleil. Three wideout single setback as Bookman once again. Straight back. And hit as he threw or threw it away. Good better field. Can't see that at Stanford Stadium too much. Out of the shotgun. Play fake, Butterfield rolls right, will throw, throws, and incomplete, well covered that time, intended for Manning. So Miller will punt to Stecker once again, Stecker back to the 31-yard line. Wobbly kick, fair catch at the 27. 43-yard punt for Miller, no return. So the Badgers will start at the 28. This time in motion comes Sandra. That will throw on first down. Wide open over the middle was Nyquist. And Nyquist takes it all the way to the 46-yard line. Not first down of the ball game for the Badgers. Give it this time to McCullough. McCullough gets off the one tackle and gets the midfield to gain a four on individual effort. David Walker on the stop. Which are not able to play today, of course. They go out of the outdoor Mason and they shift into either splitbacks or, or an offset eye. Splitbacks this time. And it's McCullough again. McCullough on a little bit of a counter. Got a couple. Here's what Stanford has done in terms of stopping the run. And they've done it a lot better this year, albeit not against opponents the likes of the Badgers. So far, they've managed to shut it down in this ball game too. Bevel will put it up. Short drop. Throw slam. Caught by Nyquist. First down Badgers at the 38-yard line of Stanford. Stanford in the blitz, too, coming up the middle with Haskins. And in motion this time, and a gift to McCullough. Stutter step and stop after a gain of about two. Carl Hansen on the stop of the car. Play fake this time, and battle to throw. Does, wide open once again. Was Cecil Martin, the fullback, and that's going to be close to another first down. He might be a yard short. Third down and short now. 
two tight ends in the ball game. McCullough, first down and more, stopped at the 22-yard line. It's a 23-yard line first down. McCullough again shakes a tackle, shakes two, and is dropped at the 18-yard line. Tough four yards, five yards on the play. Josh Madsen holding on for dear life. Yeah, really. And one of the things about a guy like that who has so much talent where he can use his agility in the hole is that you, you get really infatuated with the bear and you like to dance a little bit too much. And sometimes when you're that big, you just want to run in the hole, go real fast, get in and get out. Right now, he's showing you that he can just really dance a little bit. Royce Robertson replaces him at the tailback spot now. Gain of five on first down. It's second and five. Play fake pass. Caught this time by Robertson. Robertson inside the 10 to the six yard line. Another first down for the Badgers. Chris Kraft runs him out. Oh, remember, Wisconsin threw the ball very well early in the game against Colorado, too. Give this time to Robertson. Nothing doing. Robertson stopped. Might have gotten a yard. Brian Batson turned him around. McCullough back in the ball game for Roberson now. This is McCullough on the sweep. Turned inside nicely. Kwame Ellis with a big defensive play. No gain. This will be the 12th play of this drive. Started at the run 33. Offset eye. McCullough the tailback. Devil's going to throw. Does for McCullough. Too tall, and he might have scored. So the field goal try now. John Hall will do the kicking. He'll hit it at the 13-yard line, 23-yard effort. And it is perfect. So Wisconsin has scored first. Five minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It's the Badgers three and the Cardinal nothing. We'll be back to Stanford Stadium after this. David Dunn and Marlon Evans will be the deep men to receive the kick here from Hall. they've talked about the Cardinal offense being vanilla and so far I would say that's as advertised yeah I wouldn't say there are any nuts in that thing yet no chocolate and it's been a rocky road yeah <laughs> all kicks it away twisting kick headed for the end zone Dunn will not try it about eight yards deep Tyrone Willingham in his first year here at Stanford. He was here once before as the running backs coach under Denny Green. Had some good running backs at that time, too. Glenn yeah. Milburn, Tommy Vardell. Mm -hmm. Yep, very much so. Went on to the Vikings, did a good job there with uh, Denny Green. You know, he also spent some time with Bill Walsh. He's uh, been to some of his programs, been to 49er camps while he was an assistant coach in college and the like. It's been a real whirlwind for him. You know, when he came out to Stanford, he lived in a hotel for about six months before his family was able to move out from Minnesota. So he was out here by himself working hard on the football program. Now that should be a procedure call against Stanford as Ken Longcar in the ballgame. He is in the ballgame for Nate Parks, who went out after the last series with what looked to be a shoulder injury. And I think it must be said that the one area Stanford cannot afford to be hurt is on that offensive line. They are very thin and very inexperienced once you get past the starting five. Well, you know, you look at Jeff Bucky and T.J. Gaynor and Brad Badger, and those are great, solid players that have been around for a while, but Stanford really doesn't have much depth outside of that, and Dana Bible expressed a lot of concern about that going into this ball game. And when you think about Stanford's desire to pound the football, you realize that that could be a problem. Dead ball foul. Offside on the defense. Five yards. It's the first penalty in the ball game. Well, they called it on Wisconsin. Oh, they called it on the defense. They called it on the defense, but Lokar act, Lonkar actually moved, and, they, and Wisconsin was only shifting. Yeah, they, saw the they, yeah. they just reached across the line and tapped somebody on the head when they saw Lonkar move. Yeah. That just looked like a gimme for Wisconsin. Well, Obviously, the officials saw something that we didn't. Or we saw something the officials didn't. I'm not sure which. <laughs> a man in motion this time. And Mr. Rector took it. hits the hole and gets to the 30. to about the 33. Again, of about three yards on the play. He gets to the hole in a hurry. 
straight back Butterfield with time, runs out of time now. Now he's gonna have to scramble. Got a little room at the 35, the 40, and got about nine. They give him about eight. It's gonna be second down and two. Book cut back, short of the first down, I believe. As he gets a very generous spot. They go out of the eye formation, two tight ends, single wide out. A pitch this time, and Canella can't hang on and goes down after a loss of about four. And Stanford goes backwards in a big hurry. So Miller to punt to Stecker now. Stecker stands back at his own 20 yard line. Twisting kick, he did turn this one over. Stecker going to try it at the 20, hit immediately, and down back the 16-yard line. 41-yard punt, and he went backwards. Jeff Bird, the transfer from Columbia, down there to make the stop. So the Badgers will start down at the 15-yard line when we come back. Single setback, three wide receivers. Give to McCullough, short side. Got to about the 42. Gain of about six, Chris Draft on the tackle. Slot left this time on third down and a short five. Bevel to throw. Incomplete that time. Threw it behind the intended receiver who was Ryan Sandra. So both teams sputtering just a little bit offensively. Alexander to punt now. Damon Dunn, the deep man, one hopper again on the snap. Second time that's happened. Twisting kick. Dunn at the 12-yard line. Slips by the first man, trying to get to the outside. Trying to direct traffic at the same time. And is down at the 26-yard line. And that's where the Cardinal will begin. Let's go to the sideline right now. And Tom Kirkland. Tom. All right, guys. This is where offensive right tackle Nate Park should be. It's his jersey. 6'6", 303. Obviously, he's not in there. Bad news for the Cardinal. Sprained left shoulder. Looks like he's out for the game. And that is very tough, as we mentioned. Thank you, Tom, for that. Cardinal very thin on the offensive line. Ken Lonkar, who replaced Nate Parks, very inexperienced. So a real test now for the Cardinals. Slot right on first down, and they bring Selena in motion. Butterfield will throw with time. Throws caught by Harris. First down at the 42-yard line. Leonard Taylor on the stop. Well, I think that's what Mark Butterfield does very, very well. He just drops back and fires that thing, Barry. He threw that on the line. That's the rocket. Watch from this angle. This ball is just going to take off. Bam! Look at that thing fly out of there. Right to Harris. Right around three guys. He does that as well as anybody. Now you see the numbers on Harris. His 10th catch of the year. Play fake this time. Butterfield to throw. Clark the tight end at midfield. Fumbles the ball. The Badgers have it at the 43-yard line. So there's the turnovers that both coaches talked about. And the Badgers taking advantage of the first one of the ball game. Kevin Huntley on the recovery. And that man is not a happy guy. Time running out first period, 135. Here's a reverse this time with Reggie Torian on the carry. Gets the midfield and is really cracked. But did pick up about seven yards. It's a great hit by number 11, Leroy Pruitt. But a gain of seven. It's second down and three. Single setback this time, three wideouts. Bevel to McCullough. McCullough with a first down and more as the left side of the offensive line of Wisconsin just blew the Cardinal back off the ball that time. John Hebert makes the stop. Offset eye once more with McCullough, the tailback. McCullough on a little bit of a delay. Trips and falls as he crossed the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard. Cecil Martin was the man he fell over. Offset eye once more with McCullough, the tailback. McCullough on a little bit of a delay. Trips and falls as he crossed the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard. Cecil Martin was the man he fell over. You know, chatting with uh, Barry Alvarez yesterday, Barry, I think it was very interesting how he talked about his team playing Colorado tough, and then they had a little trouble at some point, and they couldn't get over it. What did he use? He called it flinching or so? Exactly. That's right. A young team, and he was concerned about how they would play against Colorado, and he said that they reached a point in the ball game where, you know, you, you're going to win or you're going to make a good play or not, and it got tough. And they flinch. Yeah, his definition of flinching is don't get wrapped up in the flow 
just go play to play. And I'm sure that's what he's telling his team as we come to the end of the first 15 minutes of play. And a look at the scoreboard shows the Wisconsin Badgers three, the Stanford Cardinal nothing. We'll be back. Three to nothing ball game as we start the second quarter. Wisconsin on the move again at the Stanford 39. Bevel to put it up, does so caught this time by Michael London. Got about four yards on the play. Leroy Pruitt on the stop. Take a look at the first quarter notes. 23-yard field goal from Hall after a 13-play drive that covered 67 yards. The only scoring in the first quarter. Stanford, three punts and a fumble on its first four possessions. The numbers on Butterfield, three of eight, 45 yards. That included the pass that resulted in a fumble, however. And Wisconsin outgaining Stanford by 36 yards. Third down and a long five. Bevel will put it up. Throws wide open is London, and he made the catch at the 25-yard line. And uh, Pruitt showing London a lot of respect, maybe even a little bit too much. Yeah, you can't give that much room as a cornerback when you're playing teams that like to run out patterns. You have to play a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. And I think Wisconsin is really noticing that right off the bat, and they're figuring that they can throw it on first down. I wouldn't be surprised, Barry, to see them throw now on first down because they expect to get the same kind of soft coverage. Ball right at the 25-yard line. Once again, the Badgers this year have just had trouble in the red zone. They give it to McCullough on first down. Gets a little gap, but got about four to the 21. Chris Draft dragged him down. A guy that weighs 220 pounds will make a defensive guy like Draft fall on his back. You like to see the running back as a defensive player. You want to knock the running back on his back. When he knocks you on your back, that was two or three extra yards for them. Give him five yards on the play to the 20-yard line. McCullough now 12 carries, 41 yards. Stanford, remember, only allowing about 98 yards per game on the ground. Offset eye on second and five. Going to be a little sweet this time. McCullough slips the first wave of tacklers, gets inside the 20 to about the 19. Got a yard or two. My call runs him down. He may run it twice, though. Showing blitz, play fake, Bevel rolling, will throw, look at end zone, now, nobody there, comes underneath, knocked away. Good defensive job that time by Josh Madsen. Try <laughs> for the field goal, is on its way, and no good. So once again, the Badgers able to move the football, but this time come up empty. And the Cardinal from the tennis dodged another bullet. 12-29 remaining in a half, Wisconsin leads it. Three to nothing, we're coming back. Cardinal starts the 20 yard line. Anthony Bookman on the sweep. Little gap, got about five. Beat Monty. Doesn't take much more to gap for Bookman. Second down and five now. Play fake, Butterfield, slant. Harris makes the catch. Got a little room across the 40 to the 44 yard line. And check out the rack, the run after the catch. That's exactly what Dana Bible says they needed to do. Receivers have to catch the ball and then get lots of yards after the catch. Butterfield will put the ball there for you, but he wants his receivers to do something with it afterwards. I'll allow the 49er receivers to check this out. Right there, he's got to pick up more yardage. He runs away from his defensive back and picks up another eight yards after he made the catch. Well, the Stanford offense starting to get a bit of a wake-up call. They were moving the football before the fumble the last time, and they pick up a first down here at the 44-yard line. Butterfield will put it up on first down. In trouble, wrapped up at the 42, flagged down. Might get a face mask. Brian Jurowitz made the stop, but might have made an error. I think so, and how about Butterfield? He was the guy who started calling the face mask even while he was being tackled. On his way down to the ground, he starts yelling at the official, the face mask, the face mask. Watch it here, you'll see 85 left of the screen. There he is, he grabs the face mask. Now watch Butterfield. He starts calling for the face mask right away before he hits the ground. <laughs> Discussion amongst the officials going on. There's Jurowitz. Academic all-conference. Face mask. Five yards against the defense. He marked off on the previous spot. Repeat first down. So the Cardinal gets five yards and gains it down. And the Badgers, conversely, lose a sack. You know, he walks back to the huddle, and I'm sure his teammates are giving him a little grief, you know. Oh, yeah, Mr. All-Academic, huh? Yeah. What are you doing grabbing the face mask? All right, 3-5 this. <laughs> Where do they say that in New York, I think, though? They don't say that in Wisconsin, do they? All the defensive backs are standing under, the, under their breath. Yeah, <laughs> They're too small. Cardinal goes out of the I formation with Selena, the fullback. 
straight back front of field. Runs out of time, steps up, got room, midfield, 45, headed to the outside at the 40, down to the 37-yard line. And another first down for Stanford. Butterfield gives this time to Bookman, gets outside, 35, 30, 25, and out of bounds. He gets to the corner in a big hurry. Well, you know, Barry, the thing that he showed you right there was not just the speed, but the quickness. Hundley makes the, makes the pickup, but Hundley had to wait for him to get out there with that quick speed. They go out of the eye formation once more. Bookman again, inside this time. Little room again, got about eight, down to the 17-yard line. Eric Unverzat on the stop. Second down, a long two. Out of the eye formation once again. They flop the tight end. Bookman again, trying to get outside this time. Wrapped up in the backfield. Great penetration that time by Pete Motti. Third down now, and a long five. Split backs this time. Butterfield straight back. Throws caught by Harris. Harris to the 10-yard line and the first down. Quick throw that time by Butterfield, and he had to make it quick. Well, Harris has the label of being Stanford's possession receiver as Leonard, tackle, Leonard Taylor made that tackle. But Harris has a lot of speed, Barry. If you think that he's the guy who's slow, he will outrun you. And he has good ability. He can run after he makes the catches. He showed you a little bit earlier. And he's the guy who should be playing in the NFL. He's old enough to do that. He's old enough to retire from the NFL. He and Bevel, very similarly, were 25 years old, each one on a Mormon mission for two years. Now in their senior year of college ball. The give this time is to Camella. And Camella gets to about the seven-yard line. Wisconsin should be thinking about bringing pressure from the top side, Barry. That will shift Bookman into backfield. Butterfield, pump fake, in trouble, throws, caught by Manning at the five-yard line. Butterfield just unloaded that in time and threw it into a little bit of traffic. 3-0 ball game. Wisconsin leads. Stanford driving third down and four. Biggest offensive play of the ball game for the Cardinal. Butterfield short drop, looks in, so batted away at the line of scrimmage. Big time play that time by Sala, who I believe got a hand on the ball. Thank you, Park. Abrams' field goal try to equal is up and good. So Eric Abrams has put Stanford on the board, and with seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the half, it's the Badgers and the Cardinal tied up at three. Neither team able to punch it into the end zone. And Barry Alvarez's Badgers, as you look at Eric Abrams now creeping up the all-time scoring leader ladder at Stanford. There's the, take me to your left. Yeah, there's, the, <laughs> there's the name on there you recognize, Darren Nelson. Former Stanford halfback, set the number of records, and played for the Vikings. It's hard to say that Alvarez uh, has been at the doorstep, but uh, unable to cross it. He's getting smacked by the welcome wagon. Abrams will kick it off. Short kick this time. Stecker. Well, it carried. Stecker two yards deep, going to come out to the 5, to the 10, to the gap, to the 20, look out, 30, to the 40, and Abrams got his way at the 45-yard line. <laughs> and give this time to McCullough. McCullough stopped by Kwame Ellis on a big play, hit him, or rather, Seelow Swinton hits him immediately. Oh, Nebraska, and I know that's a good football team, but that's still an embarrassment. Play fake, double the throw. Floats one out here, and it's caught by Reggie Torian, and that one was really up for grabs, and Torian was there to grab it. Down ball at the 38-yard line. Play fake and double the throw again. Throws underneath for McCullough. Got about two run out of bounds almost immediately by Chris Draft. Well, Barry, when Wisconsin runs that play, that rollout, Bevel looks deep first. He's trying to get his wide receiver deep in the end zone, and if he's not there, then he uses his progression, and he looks for the shorter guy, and if the shorter guy isn't there, then he drops it off to the back, and you see he's dropped it off a couple of times in completing 8 out of 13 passes. Yeah, when we looked at the film of the Colorado game, we saw him run that play, what, four or five times probably, and almost always went deep, and usually in the coverage. Exactly, exactly. Give this time to McCullough straight ahead. McCullough taking people with him inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. He's going to be close to a first down. Two tight ends, two wide outs. Bevel and Sneak, and he got it. Taking advantage of that line charge that they've had. Big offensive line. A big offensive line that is working on a thin 
terms of depth. Thin line for Stanford. That offensive line for Wisconsin, Darius Huge. Castro goes at 310. 285 for Vanderbilt. Offensive lineman has earned all Big Ten honors nine times in the last three seasons. And Stark is 284. They're, they're pretty big up there, Gary. Big and tough. Out of the eye formation this time on first down. And this is McCarrada Roberson. And Roberson hurling over the top gets down about the 22 yard line. Gain of about five. Single setback now, Roberson. On second down and five. Double going to put it up. Throws for Roberson out of the backfield, and he's inside the 20 to about the 19 yard line. It'll be about a yard short of the first down. Chris Draft runs him out. It'll be third and short. Good play by Chris Draft on Roberson. Roberson ideally would like to make Draft miss. When you get one on one as a running back with a linebacker, you want to be able to make that guy miss so that you can go ahead and pick up big yardage. That's why they isolate you with that linebacker. That time, Draft won the battle. Third down, just over a yard. Out of the eye formation again, Roberson with tailback and the offset out. This is Roberson, has the first down to about the 16 yard line. And I'd say that'd be number 60, Steve Stark. I'd expect him to run it to the right side or sneak it to the right side. Stanford comes with eight men on the line of scrimmage. They're gonna put it out. Bevel throws, caught by Martin, first down. He just hung on and then actually lost the ball out of bounds, but it's gonna be a first down. Short of the 15-yard line. line. Out of the eye formation once more. This is Roberson trying to get outside. Stanford strung it out, but Roberson still found a little gap and got down about the 12-yard line. Got about three on the play. Leroy Pruitt makes the fingertip tackle. Well, he's an all-business guy. There's no question about it. Good guy, though. <laughs> Give to Roberson again. Couldn't find a gap that time. Knocked backwards and stood straight up by Mike Hall. Big play right here, third and seven. They go out of the eye formation, but cut it back in the ball game with Martin in the backfield. In motion comes Simmons. Double to pass. Throws wide open. Martin at the five. Touchdown, Badgers. You know, I can't help but think that's one of those things that the coaches up in the box up here recognized something something that happened before that they felt they could exploit and they just found the right time to exploit it uh, you may be right track for point is up and good the look at the scoreboard at 249 left shows wisconsin ahead 10 to 3. here's another look well you see Matson right there he had two guys come out his way nyquist number 31 the tight end and then 37 martin and it looked as if looked as if he maybe had some indecision as to which one he was supposed to have on that play <laughs> Raymond Dunn fumbles the football and then decides, I better not do this. Stanford first down at the 20-yard line. Bookman, not much. Got a couple. Barry says, if I could recruit in the summer and the spring months, he said, there's a beautiful lake, Lake Union, right on the campus here. He said, we could sit, look out at the lake, talk about how beautiful it is. But he said, I got to recruit in the wintertime. I get kids up here. He said, I got to explain that there's a lake out there and that those houses that are out there are not permanent. And in the summertime, those cars aren't parked out there. <laughs> He's got a guy from Southern California out there going, right, coach. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he said, if I could only get him here in the summertime, I'd get every kid that came on campus. Splitbacks on second down and eight. Butterfield straight back, has to hurry, shakes a tackle, now steps up, not going to get much. They with the screw together. Nebraska, that's first basketball player, very football player. Butterfield throws wide open this time, is Manning, it's going to be a foot race. Manning caught from behind at the 47-yard line by Kevin Huntley. Big play for the Cardinal. Not a lot in the way of the pass. It was only about a 10-yard curl, but check out the rack. After he made the catch, Manning ran with the ball, the run after the catch. Unverzat was putting some pressure on Butterfield. Butterfield unloaded it in a hurry. Butterfield steps up, throws underneath this time. Caught by Camella. Camella to the 39-yard line. Stanford using the hurry-up offense. Butterfield hitting the underneath receivers, picking up first down. Stanford now inside of Wisconsin territory. Three wide receivers once again for the Cardinal. Butterfield out of the shotgun, looking deep, wide open. Harris to the 20-yard line, down to the 13. Well, Harris ran a heck of a route. 
they caught Wisconsin in a two deep coverage. It's an inexperienced secondary. The two safeties were really hanging on the hash marks. Harris tried to fake like he was going to stay in the middle of the field, and then he broke it back out. And Taylor, 34, comes over to make the tackle, but Butterfield has him wide open. Look at the distance here. 34, Taylor was really hanging on the hash mark there, and Harris simply ran away from him. So the Cardinal will go to work just short of the 13-yard line. Quick pass this time dropped by Damon Dunn at the 13. Wasn't going to go much. They've been done in motion, one or rather Manning in motion this time. Butterfield with time, throws underneath. Bookman has it the five, race to the end zone. Touchdown, Cardinal. What well, a quick and efficient drive. Well, number four, Anthony Bookman was a great high school receiver. Stanford turned him into a running back. He was an honorable mention All-American in Grand Prairie, Texas. And coming out of the backfield, he is very dangerous. Stanford flooded the zone that time. Three receivers out there, and they picked on the safeties for Wisconsin. So the try for point, Eric Abrams, is on its way in the air and good. With 119 remaining, once again, this is a tied football game. Wisconsin 10, Stanford 10, seven plays, 80 yards. Probably the most efficient drive of the season for the Stanford Cardinal. Well, you see Brian Manning in motion there. He shows that he's got to pick up one man. That's man-to-man -man coverage. Now, who has number four? Well, he's got to be picked up by a safety now. Number 34 right in there. That's Taylor. He's got a long way to go to pick up number four. You see they're making the adjustment. You take that guy, I'll take that guy. Nobody picks up number four. 34, Taylor has to come over and try to make the play, but not before Bookman gets in the end zone. So a minute and 19 seconds left. Not out of the question. Wisconsin could do a little business. Well, Stanford's uh, coaches were asking themselves yesterday whether they could play with Wisconsin, and that this would be a real test for them. As you see the scoring drive, 80 yards, seven plays, a minute and 30 seconds. And I think so far after 30 minutes of play, almost very, the answer is yes, they can play with Wisconsin. Yeah, both teams, I think, have picked it up a notch from their last performance. And even though Wisconsin's obvious, they got blown out by Colorado, I think the same could be said for Stanford, even though they won the game against Utah, approximately. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. 10-10, McCullough steps out of a tackle, gets across the 30 to the 31, a gain of 10 in the first down. Josh Matson on the stop. <laughs> Give it to McCullough once again, same play, same route, same result. 10 more. My call makes the stop, but he's picking it up in chunks here. Well, Wisconsin should call for a measurement here. I think it's pretty close. They should ask, and that would at least stop the clock a little bit. We're down to about 32 seconds, Barry, and I would have thought they would have asked for a measurement to at least stop the clock. Well, now they got to go back and huddle here, and the clock continues to tick. Not very good clock management here for the Badgers. No, I think that's going to end the half for them. They're not going to get much more off in this play. And I'm not sure they'll do anything with this one either. They're going to try a no play fake reverse. Devil's going to throw, hit as he does, and McCullough can't hang on. Clock stops at nine seconds remaining in the half. Three wideouts once again in the ball game. This should be the last play of the first half. Stanford just spreads its defense out. And they give it to McCullough. McCullough straight ahead. Got to the 45, and that's the way the first half will come to an end. The clock's got to stop because they made a first down, but I, I don't believe they'll even attempt to make another snap, and they won't. So the end of the, well, they're going to stop the clock, but I, they're well, going to still start the clock before the ball is snapped, so right. I think this is just a little bit of an exercise here. Right, they can't leave the field yet. Once the official whistles it back in, they'll roll the clock, and they have, and now they can leave. Well, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> the minutia of college football. First half comes to an end. Interesting, if not exciting, first half. And a look at the scoreboard shows Wisconsin 10 and Stanford 10. And Wisconsin will get the football, so Barry Alvarez and his troops will have the first opportunity to do some business. And as we said, this, this really could come down to a coach's encounter. Who makes the adjustments? Who does the things you need to do to win? Games that are 10-10 at halftime. Eric Abrams kicking to Stecker, the deep man, and he drives this one. There'll be no return. 
had the ball for a long time, just didn't do an awful lot with it. McCullough on first down, tries the sweep. Steps inside, slips a tackle into the open, still on his feet across the 40, taking people with him to the 42, and a late flag, and I'm quite sure that's going to go against Stanford as well. Longest play of the game for Wisconsin, a 20-yard gain plus the 15-yard penalty. Offset eye once again on first down. McCullough again, right up the gut, inside the 40, and again, Five yards on first down, that's something that the Stanford coaches said could not happen if they're to win the football game, and Wisconsin is making it happen. Again, they go out of the offset eye on second down and five. It basically gives Wisconsin a free play. And they'll put it up. Bevel throws underneath. Martin fumbles the ball out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Somehow, I don't feel they'll do that this time. They give it instead to Roberson, not going to get it. Stopped short. Brian Batson makes the stop. Batson having a big game. Well, Batson is playing very well. I don't believe that in short yard situations you can run counters or slow developing plays. I think you have to go right at people. You see the little counter there, the influence. 44 Roberson tried to go to his right and then came back to his left. Well, you have to expect that the defense is going to be crashing. They're going to be bringing people and get into your backfield. You have to get there before they do. I don't think you come with a slow developing run. Brings up one of those emotional plays. Either team can get a lift from this. Fourth down, less than a yard. Offset eye. Watch bootleg now. They give it instead of a color with plenty of room. Trying to get the outsides. Cuts it back inside instead and takes it down to the 15-yard line. Leroy Pruitt, the saving tackle, but a big first down for the band. Ball at the 15, first down. Follow the snap. Get it to McCullough, and that play was just broken from the get-go. Loss of about two, Kylie Wong. Puts the finishing touch on McCullough. McCullough, the Ohio in that place. 25 years old, the senior quarterback, and four-year start. Play fake, Bevel will throw off the boot once again. Wide open, Sundrift this time. Gets it down to about the nine-yard line where he stepped out of bounds. Josh Madsen runs him out. Down in a long four now. Two tight ends in the ballgame. Single wide out. That is Tony Simmons. And whistles blow, and we got a penalty. And I believe Caetano Castro jumped. Dead ball. Dead ball. Ball start. Ball start. On, the On the offense. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. Offset eye once again. Third down passing situation now for Bevel. Let's see what he does. Straight back to pass. Throws. And it's caught nicely by the tight end Nyquist. And Nyquist going to get a first down at the three yard line. First down goal at the three yard line now for the Badgers. They go out of the offset eye again, bring Martin in motion, give it to McCullough, trying to get outside behind Martin, and he stopped at about the three-yard line. Again, it's Batson who turned the play in. Actually, inside the two-yard line, really only about a yard and a half to go for a touchdown. I think number 13, McCullough might get the football down here. There's a good chance of that. Cardinal jumping around defensively, they bring Simmons in motion. Give it to McCullough, McCullough, going to be a little short. No touchdown, he got the ball across. Just reached across the plane of the goal line, even though it was stopped short. It's the ball that's got across the plane, and it did, and the Badgers have taken the lead. Try for point now with John Hall, the place kicker. Out of the hole to Bevel. No, I beg your pardon, it's not Bevel that's holding. Yes, it is, Bevel. It's holding, and Hall gets it through. So it doesn't matter who's holding. It's a 17 to 10 ball game with 11 minutes, 35 seconds. Take another look at the touchdown and a good effort from McCullough. Stopped short, just reached the ball across the goal line. We're coming back. Well, Stanford has a real dilemma because Wisconsin will want to make sure that they put a little pressure on and force Stanford to get their defense back on the field in a hurry. Short kick this time, and it's going to be Evans at the 5, to the 10, to the 15. Got a little gap, got to the 30, into the open. Got to beat the kicker, midfield, still on his feet, 45-40, and out of bounds. What a big return by Marlon Evans. And the Cardinal will start in Wisconsin territory.
Well, 66 Damon, yards. Damon Dunn has been the guy that has been hurting people for the last year and a half returning kicks. Marlon Evans gets a chance now. The young man from Maryland gets great blocking and then turns on the Jets. And all he has to do is beat the kicker here. He does. Good block by 34 Camella. But then he steps out of bounds and he knows, oh, if I just could have stayed in. 54 yards, said 66, 54 yards on the return. Cardinal goes out of the offset. I play fake, and Butterfield, a little boot, throws underneath this time for Selena, and Selena gets it to the 36, a gain of five. Second down and five now. This is Bookman on the short side sweep. Dragged out from behind. Excellent penetration once more by Salah as they go out of the shotgun. Butterfield with time with all day. Now running out of time. Throws wide open as Camella. Camella at the 40. Trying to beat one man. 35 down to the 31 yard line. Going to be, I believe, a little short of the first down. Stanford's going to be looking at fourth and short. They'll go out of the eye formation. They got the big guys in there. Camella the tailback. Selena the fullback. And Butterfield the quarterback. Fourth and inches. Butterfield on the sneak. I think he got enough. Well, they only needed a couple of inches, and Butterfield is 6'4", and he fell forward. I figure he picked up, figured he picked up that first down. Badgers don't think so. As they unpile. Now, how do you know exactly where to spot the ball when the guy ends up on top of the pile? You got to find, okay, where we put it? Did we put it right where his numbers were, where the, where the ball was? You don't really know because he wasn't on the ground measure again it did not get what you would interpret as a generous spot here but this is going to be close probably closer than it should be given that that pile moved first down I mean, if you only have a couple of yards to go now watch there's no pushback right away you see how how far forward Butterfield goes that's got to be enough for a first down see what's happened with Stanford getting back to the running game look at the middle there Bill Walsh when he was a coach here over three years Stanford ran the ball 28 percent of the time picking up their yardage 72 percent in the air uh, they've turned it around now 59 percent on the ground for Stanford Butterfield to throw on first down does so a lot for Bookman Bookman makes the catch bubbles out of bounds it'll be a completed pass to the 24 yard line Leonard Taylor defending out of the eye formation on second and three give it to Bookman left side Bookman Dives forward, got a yard or two, turned something, nothing into something. Yeah, that number 19 you were talking about as a Stanford quarterback has got to be Chad Hutchinson, the freshman from Southern California. I guess he's a pretty fair baseball player, huh? Pretty fair baseball player. Turned down a million and a half dollars to go play for the Atlanta Braves to come to school and play baseball and football at Stanford. and. Uh, the coaching staff won't say so, but observers, the, the infamous observers, say that he is very much the real deal as a quarterback in football, too. Butterfield short drop, quick throw. Camella makes the catch the 20. Dodge throw to the 15. First down, Cardinal. First down pass. Underneath, tight end, making the catch this time was Clark and fell down immediately at the nine-yard line. Had some room to go. Uh, we talk about the quarterbacks at Stanford, and uh, this year, no emphasis on the quarterback. The most recent, of course, Steve Stenstrom, who just made himself a whole bunch of money. John Elway, Jim Plunkett, John Brody, Bobby Garrett, Frankie Albert, and that is just naming a few. Single setback, same set again. Selena straight ahead, got close to the first down. First down, goal to go for the five-yard line for the Cardinals. Camella slips outside, gets to the one. Maneki makes the saving tackle. Draw play by Stanford. Camella does a good job cutting inside and picking up yardage for Stanford. Wisconsin really kind of out of sorts here. I kind of thought that on this drive they would come out and expect Stanford to, to really throw the ball and they put a little pressure on them, but they are, they are afraid to put pressure on. They don't want man coverage, and even down here they were playing the zone. They finally got into their goal line defense. I think Stanford has Wisconsin guessing right now, too, and guessing wrong. Give it to Selena again. Selena stops short. Nothing fancy, just power football. And, you know, I hearken back 
to when Ty Willingham was here as the running backs coach at Stanford. And in this area, he would just give the ball to another big guy, Tommy Vardell. Touchdown, Tommy Vardell. No one's earned any nickname on, on the Stanford campus yet. But if they keep rounding the ball out like this and are able to punch it in, somebody will pick up a nickname. Third down. Yard to go for a touchdown. Split backs this time. Going to throw for it. And Kamala makes the catch. Touchdown, Stanford. Pretty impressive drive by the Cardinal. Impressive on both sides. Impressive Wisconsin going one way and Stanford coming the other. We got a ball game. Well, incredibly important for Stanford to have an answer to Wisconsin. And terrible, terrible for Wisconsin's defense to let Stanford get right back in it after their offense comes out and puts seven on the board. Well, you know, it's interesting. Stanford has, has been, I suppose you could say, accused of running a vanilla offense. I'm not sure it's really an accusation as Abrams tries the point. Makes it good, and we're tied at 17. But I didn't see that drive as being vanilla at all. A 12-play drive, 41 yards. The whole drive was in Wisconsin territory. Play fake pass. Old as the hills. Threw it to the wrong side, but Cavallo made the catch. Last three possessions, Stanford has put points on the board. So Abrams will kick it away. Stecker, the deep man with Martin. And Abrams hits this one into the end zone. Stecker about five yards deep. Gonna come out with it. Martin's trying to say no. Stecker saying, I'm going. And he's down short of the 20-yard line. But he's a big hit in the dormitory. <laughs> <laughs> Straight ahead, McCullough. McCullough just running over people. I mean, he is really looking all world right now. Yeah, right now, the offensive lines for both teams are wearing down the defensive fronts of the other side. McCullough had 43 of them. He gets the first eight here. He's going to get another shot right here. Getting outside. Got some room to the 40. Breaks a tackle midfield. 40. Out of bounds the 33-yard line. And McCullough is just doing everything right now. Getting a lot of help from his friends, too. In the third and fourth quarter, running games that pound you start to wear on you, and it looks like Stamps is starting to get worn down a little bit. Straight ahead, Roberson again, and Roberson's contained this time after a gain of a couple. Kylie Long on the stop. Going to be a third down. Single setback this time. Play fake, down to the throw, and the boot once again. Big pressure, has to unload it, and does so just in time. Right in his face was Brian Werner. One of the few times today Stanford has gotten a good push on Bevel. Well, you're right on the money with that, Barry, and it's the first time they've taken care of the bootleg out there. They covered the tight end on it, and they also put pressure on Bevel. Bevel wants to throw to the tight end who's dragging uh, along the line of scrimmage. He can't do it because he's covered by 42 bats, and so he just throws the ball away. So it's going to be fourth down, and the Badgers will go. Fourth and three. Two tight ends, two wide out, single setback. Battle to throw again. Looks and has London, and London stopped at the 10 yard line. But once again, just much too much of a cushion on the outside. Roberson remains in the ball game at the running back spot. This is Roberson inside, maybe a yard. Chris Draft on the tackle. Well, you know, it's hard to run inside on Stanford with 71, John Hebert, and number 97, Pete Swanson. Right up in here, you'll see these guys come crashing in here. They're going to take on the guards and tackles for Wisconsin, and they really just shove things inside. And that's the way they need to handle the inside trap play. And they did a good job of it on that play. Going with a single setback here, as they have much of this drive. Roberson remains the setback. They bring Nyquist in motion. Down with the throw. Over the middle. Caught by Nyquist. Touchdown, Badgers. And John Hall will come on to try the point. Hall's kick is on its way and is merely perfect. 2-11 remaining third quarter. A look at the scoreboard. Shows the Wisconsin Badgers 24, the Stanford Cardinal 17. Three possessions, three touchdowns. Bang, bang, football. We're coming back.
kicks are simply shorter, and the Stanford deep men are lined up at the five-yard line going the other way. They're halfway in the end zone. Twisting line drive kick headed for Damon, or rather for Marlon Evans. Picks it up, gets back to 10 and 20. Again, he's got a gap. Gets to the 35-yard line before he stopped at the 37 by Cyril Weems. The pressure from the outside is fearless. They bring Salina in motion, give it to Bookman on first down. Bookman turns the corner, gets the 40, gets the 45. First down at the 48-yard line. Salina with a great clear-out block. Salina with the clear out and Brian Manning with the blocking downfield, which allows Bookman to pick up a few more yards. Very important for Stanford on this drive to pick up some first downs and allow their defense to get a rest after being on the field for two long drives. Salina with the great block there on the corner there to spring Bookman. And then you see the blocking downfield by Manning that allows him to pick up more yardage. Well, we talked about that last week that uh, wide receivers are expected to do more than catch the ball now. Jerry Rice can block, so can they. Better field to pass with time. Throws over the middle, dropped by Manning. And you won't see that too often. He has very, very good hands. Second down and 10. They cover the blitz this time. Give it to Bookman. Bookman slips the first tackler into the open. Gets the 45 to the 44 yard line. Took advantage of the blitz. Yeah, he just darts in there like a little pinball and bounces around and keeps his feet. He's got a low center of gravity since he's 5'7", about 180 pounds. Watch the shots he'll take. And when you blitz, you don't have a real close second line of defense. So a guy, if he makes you miss, he can pick up good yardage. See the way he turned around 47 there? He just did a real good job of turning around uh, Unverzat that time. Look at the yardage. Big, big job there. So big play for the Cardinal offensively. Third down and two, long two. Split backs, Butterfield gonna pass. Knocked out of the line of scrimmage, caught by Butterfield. So the pass from Butterfield to Butterfield. <laughs> and he gained about a yard actually on the play. It's gonna be fourth down. Here's a real decision now for Ty Willingham. Jurowitz was the guy who got a hand on it. Last time I saw something like this, it was Steve Young of the 49ers catching his own pass and trying to run it to the end zone. I guess Butterfield thought too and realized that he could catch his own pass. Tyrone Willingham goes with the conservative choice here, which is to punt the ball and try and pin down Wisconsin in their own territory. But his defense will have to come back on the field. I know that they are tired right now. Well, again, we talked about Ty Willingham. He's going to take the percentages. This he figures is in his best interest. Stecker, fair catch, 10-yard line. You were coming yeah, down. <laughs> so it's very predictable. Isn't it? <laughs> Give this time to McCullough. McCullough got about four. Again, good first down yardage. Mine Batson on the stop. As we come to the end of the third quarter, and a look at the scoreboard shows Wisconsin 24, the Stanford Cardinals 17. One quarter of football left. Second down six for the Badgers as we start the final quarter. They go out of the offset eye once again. McCullough steps out of a tackle, gets the 20, gets the 25-yard line, and he has been the difference in the second half. Single setback now, first down and 10, ball at the 25-yard line, double, rolls right, he'll pass, throws, juggled by Sundrip, couldn't hang on, hang on. Second down and 10 now for the Badgers. Again, they go out of the offset arm. Again, they'll put it up. Bevel, pump fakes wide open this time as Cantrell makes the catch for a gain of four. All right, thanks, Tom. Third down and long now. Big play here for both teams. Bevel straight back to pass. Great protection over the middle. Drop. Well defended that time by Pruitt, who got a hand on the ball. And if he didn't get a hand on the ball, it probably would have been interference. Well, Pruitt was locked on in man coverage. Stanford was blitzing. Pruitt did manage to get the right hand in there, but Barry, you're right. He may have made a little contact in addition to getting the right hand in there. So Bevel putting it up three times after McCullough had been running almost at will. 186 yards rushing now for McCullough. Don will be the deep man for Stanford, standing at about the 32-yard line. John Hall to do the punting for the Badgers, almost blocked. Fair catch called for by Dunn, makes it at the 35-yard line. Stanford starts at the 36-yard line, first down. Be a good idea for Stanford to try to pick up a couple first downs here. 
keep the defense off the field. Butterfield throws. Harris, tough catch. Cracked as he caught it at the 48-yard line. Kevin Huntley really stuck it, and a good job by Mark Harris to hold on. Yeah, Huntley did a real good job of putting a big lick on Mark Harris, but Stanford with a good idea to come out and pick up a first down and get themselves comfortable. Play action fake, and you see Harris in the middle of your screen now, number 82 just dragging across the middle of that zone, and Butterfield finds him for a first down for Stanford. So first down Cardinal to the 49-yard line. Three wide out, single setback this time for Stanford. Butterfield on a draw this time to Camella. Well defended that time. Right in his face was Tarek Sala. Tarek Sala has been a man possessed here today. He's made about three or four plays in the Stanford backfield today. You'll see 42 shoot into the middle of your screen right now. Coming in, 42 getting Camella, who's 215 pounds. Butterfield to throw for Harris, makes another tough catch and takes a big shot. First down, Cardinal at the 38. Cardinal going with no huddle here. They go out of the shotgun. Butterfield straight back once again. Steps up. He'll run. Flag down. Run out of bounds about the 42-yard line. Now we'll see about the flag. Cyril Weems ran him out. Brought down by number seven, That's in the area play. where holding is often called. And that will be exactly the call against the Cardinal. Ty Willingham on the sideline. Doesn't show you a lot of emotion, but it's churning, I promise. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of foul. It's going to take it way back in to Stanford territory at the 45 yard line. That is a huge penalty. Well, it's marked from the spot, so that's why it really takes them back so far. It's an 18 yard penalty. First down, but a long way to go. Conventional wisdom, try to get it in two or three chunks. Butterfield straight back, got time. Now he runs out of time, steps up in trouble, dropped all the way back to the 34 yard line. So the Cardinal now with a, first, a second down and 37. Butterfield in trouble again, throws a screen for Bookman and under throws him. This play might have had a little bit of room. Are not very many plays in the playbook to deal with a third and forever. And no. Tyrone Willingham is thinking, hmm, I don't have one of those, I don't think. Well, it is third and forever. So we'll see. <laughs> well, I think what you try to do here, Barry, is pick up 10 or 15 yards so that when you punt, you can pin them down inside the 10 or 15 yard line. Go out of the shotgun once again. Three-man front, and they go with a draw. Uh, play fake, I beg your pardon. Butterfield with a throw. Running out of time here. Looking for some help from some place, and he's just going to have to throw it away. Harris was somewhere in the same area code, but Butterfield just threw that one away, and a possession that saw the Cardinal go backward. Eight-man front shown by the Badgers. Twisting kick. Their catch at the 28 yard line by Stecker. 37 yard punt, no return. Badgers will start at their own 28 yard line. When we come back, 24 to 17 ball game, Wisconsin over Stanford. I know Wisconsin would like to have a few nice runs now to knock some yardage on Stanford. This is McCullough. McCullough again slips the first tackle. First tackle just never seems to get him. Never jumping around defensively. Bevel to throw now. Does so for McCullough out of the backfield. And McCullough dragged down. Good one on one tackle that time by Chris Draft. Third down, a long six now. They go out of the eye formation. They throw him to the fullback a lot in this situation. Bevel straight back this time. Throws for Simmons, makes the catch. First down out of bounds at the 42 yard line. First down at the 42, another good conversion for the Badgers. They go with the offset eye once again. 
This is Roberson stopped in the backfield. Kwame Ellis, first man, Brian Werner, there to help. Well, that's the difficulty of being a defensive back in major college football. You've got to defend the pass way down this field, and then you have to come up and support on the run. Look at Ellis. He comes right around 37 Martin. Martin never saw him. Martin was supposed to try to block him, but he didn't see him, and Ellis scooted in there to make the play. He may only be 185 pounds, but he delivers a lift. Came out of high school as a highly touted running back. Moved over to the defense in the fall of his first year. Single setback once again. Bevel gives to Roberson. Roberson doesn't get much. He got maybe two yards to the 40-yard line. And again, it'll be a third down and long for Wisconsin. With a night first in motion, Bevel straight back. Pump fake, throws deep, open is London, he underthrew the ball, it's intercepted. Intercepted by Josh Madsen, and that was just an error on this man's part. He had his man wide open. He did. He absolutely did. Number four, London, gets wide open, but he doesn't get him. You're going to see London here. He's going to come here, fake here, and then go there. And if he is get, if he gets the ball in a hurry, it's a touchdown. He'll be wide open. But the ball hangs up in the air, and Madsen, 45, is able to come over and get it. See the move there? Now look at him, wide open. But the ball hangs, and Madsen is there to pick it off. Now the Cardinal that time got a break. No question about it. They'll have it at the 35-yard line. Bookman this time gets a little gap to the 40, 45 flag down as Bookman crosses midfield, and that is very likely a hold against Stanford. There's a penalty on the play. It will be, so the Cardinal now starting to self-destruct a little bit. This time they shift Bookman into the backfield and flop the tight end. Butterfield straight back. Throws for Manning out front. Got it midfield at the 45 and the 40 yard line and stopped at the, at the 38 by Leonard Taylor. And for to go out of the eye formation on first down. Pitch this time to Bookman. Bookman trying to get outside. Now he cuts. Gets to the 35 and that was a saving tackle for Pete Monty. That was going to be a big gainer if Monty didn't stick that fingertip right onto the shoe top of Bookman. Yeah, Bookman just really kind of squirted through there too. Watch number four. You'll see this good blocking up front by 59, T.J. Gaynor. A little bit of a hold there by 87, Clark, but it isn't picked up. Pushes the man out of the way. Cut back in there by Bookman. Look at Monty making the saving tackle to keep Bookman from cutting it back inside. Out of the eye formation once again on second down and seven. Play fake, Butterfield to throw. In trouble down he goes, big time. And once again, it's Tarek Sala, who has been there on almost every big play. One of the few times they've come off the corner. Butterfield straight back, three-man rush, pump fake. Butterfield steps up, now he throws an outlet this time. Marlon Evans at the 30-yard line, down at the 32-yard line. And it is in range for Eric Abrams now, but we'll see. I think you have to go for it here. If you bring Abrams in, you're looking at about a 50-yard field goal into what is a slight wind here, and I think that would be a little difficult for him. It's true. I really didn't consider the wind, and the wind is a factor. So this time, Ty Willingham will uh, not go with the odds. He really can't from the 31-yard line, 6-10 remaining, and he's down by seven points. Split backs on fourth down. He needs about three. Butterfield, deep drop. Steps up, throws, caught by Harris. First down, Cardinal at the 23-yard line. And Harris has made every tough catch. Well, he's a big, tough guy. And Mark Butterfield knows that he'd be there for him, and he picks up seven yards to give Stanford a first down. Also his seventh catch of the game. Well, number 82 will move from right to left, settle down in the middle in between linebackers, and just pick up the pass there to get the first down for Stanford. Good job of the O-line of Stanford, too, because Butterfield has been under siege, but that time they did their job. Again, with that shift where they bring Brooklyn into the setback position and flop the tight end. Butterfield will put it up on first down. Got all day. 
throws into traffic. Too tall for Greg Clark, and that's probably the best idea. Yeah, uh, Butterfield really misread that coverage. He did not know the safety was coming over the top of Clark. He was looking at Clark 87, and he saw Clark break free behind the linebacker and did not think there would be a safety behind him. Wisconsin has not really been disguising their coverages, and I'm sure that that is something that they will get better at as their secondary gains more experience. It's a very young secondary, three sophomores and a redshirt freshman. So the numbers on Mark Butterfield, very similar to those of his quarterback counterpart, Bevel. This time to bring Salina split to the near side. Straight back Butterfield with time. Now he's got room to run. Pulls it down, he'll have a first down and more. Takes it, almost took the hit head on inside the 10 to the eight yard line. That'll have Ty just cringing a little bit. 15 yards on the carry for Butterfield. You see Wisconsin sitting in there two deep zone. These guys are gonna fly out deep. These guys are gonna hover around here and he's gonna come off there. When that happens, Butterfield is going to see a lot of room available for himself to run and pick up a first down. You see the way the guys dropped a lot of room out to the right. Butterfield sees it cave in and heads on out there. First down and goal now, the ball inside the nine. Brookman on a sweep, good blocking out front, but now they string it out. Second down goal to go, the ball at the eight yard line for the Cardinals. 24 to 17 ball game, 5.26 remaining. Butterfield over the middle, caught this time by Camella. Touchdown, Cardinal. And Camella took Pete Money for a little ride. And that doesn't happen very often. You'll see Camella right here just come up into the middle. He's going to settle down in there. He gets the ball fed to him. And then Butterfield just throws it to him right in between the linebackers. And Monty can't hold him out. Touchdown, Stanford. Abrams, the try for point is up and good. And we've got a tie ball game. 521 remaining in the game. Wisconsin 24, Stanford 24. Good job by Butterfield. I don't believe Camella was his primary receiver on that. We're coming back. Well, Eric Abrams will kick it off now. Tied at 24, 521 left. Camella on the touchdown reception from Butterfield. Butterfield's number is 23 of 34, 276 yards, three touchdowns. That's uh, worthy of the other number seven. And a few other guys. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Elway is numbers from the young man from Concord, California. Abrams short, high kick going to be handled at about the 20-yard line and brought back by John Werig, who is a reserve running back, to about the 33-yard line. Let's come back in the ball game. And he gets the call and tries to step outside, dragged down from behind by my call. Going to be around for another three years. Play fake. Double rolling out under pressure. Throws out of bounds. Single setback, three wide receivers for the Badgers on third down and eight. Bevel straight back, blitz comes, throws, caught, but short of the first down. Bold pick. Well, remember back in the first half, he didn't have the confidence to run it on fourth and one here. Will he really do this, or will he just try to draw Stanford outside? No, quick count, Roberson, first down. Nothing fancy, just kind of dancing with what brung you. So the drive continues at the 44-yard line. Roberson again, nothing. Down on the bottom, Kylie Wong, who's been a real factor here in the second half. Well, Stanford is ganging up on the tackles. They're expecting the first down run right off tackle. And so that's why they're able to stop that. They aren't able to prepare for the run, though. See, Kylie Wong is knifing inside, and they're running a stunt with number 71 coming outside for Stanford. You know, what's John interesting Hebert. to me, Rod, is that uh, we talked about this could come down to a coaching game. And I think both coaches have made some very good adjustments here. You're right. That's why it's tied, 24-24. Second down and 10. 
Bevel gives to McCullough back in the ball game, and McCullough breaks it, gets a first down to the 45-yard line, and McCullough is playing another game right now in the second half. 199 yards rushing today for Carl McCullough. And he gets the first down here and goes over 200 yards. Brian Werner on the stop, but the drive continues. That equals the performance of Alan Amici. In fact, it probably puts him up there with Billy Merrick and Mark Harrison now for the ninth best single game rushing mark at Wisconsin. He's got to go a ways to get up to number one. Billy Merrick had 304 yards in a game against Minnesota back in 1974. 245 remaining in the game. Ball at the 44-yard line. Bevel on a delay to McCullough to the 40. Eli Swinton on the stop, and it's going to bring about another critical third down. Well, running the ball in the fourth quarter is certainly key for any team, and particularly here for Wisconsin. They've been pounding Stanford in the second half. Their offensive linemen are feeling very good about themselves. They're probably looking at Stanford's defensive line saying, these guys are tired. Let's keep pounding them. Let's keep pounding them. Guy that could be the story in the ball game. John Hall on the sideline. Bevel's going to throw on third down. In trouble. Now he throws underneath. Incomplete. Well covered that time. Was Nyquist, the intended receiver. Mike Hall was a man on his back. Now, Barry, I, I don't get that because to me, if you've got third and five and less and you're pounding them with the football, go ahead and run it on third down. And if you don't get it, run it on fourth down. You're in two down territory anyway, and this happens here. You don't get Nyquist open, and now you got to punt the ball. When you went for it on fourth down, just 10 yards back. Stanford's got to be thinking fake here, too, on this punting situation. So we'll see. And they will punt it away. Try to play position football. It's going to hit at the five and down close to the goal line. Let's see. This is going to be right at the goal line. Did not get in the end zone. A big time play. Oh, it was awfully close there. Now the man's feet were in the end zone. And unless I'm misinterpreting the rule, you can't do that, can you? It was awfully close. I thought it was in the end zone. If he's in the end zone, then that ball's got to be. Oh, he dropped the ball before he touched the line there. That's the right call. Absolutely. And the man who made the play was Leonard Taylor. Wow. Wow. But if Stanford's going to do it, they're going to have to do it very dramatically. The discard Bernard was the one who fell on the ball after Taylor made the great save. Well, if you're Wisconsin, you want to hang on to things right here. You see the timeouts left. Wisconsin 3, Stanford 2. Butterfield out of his own end zone with time. Throws for Marlon Evans, who makes the catch and then is knocked from the ball. Incomplete pass. Now that is a dangerous pass, I gotta tell you, oh. to throw down in that territory, because you gotta throw that ball 30 yards. Yeah, and that was the biggest hit of the game for Jason Suttle. 28 comes up and just separates Marlon Evans from the ball, and that's what you want to do if a guy puts his hands on the ball and you're a defensive back. Separate him from the ball right now. Suttle comes up and big hit. Evans was thinking about the hit and couldn't hang on to it. So it'll be second down, the ball short of the two-yard line. Again, Butterfield with a big rush that time, got it off. And it's complete to Manning, who gets it out to the sixth, to Damon Dunn, who gets it out. It's going to be Marlon Evans, I beg your pardon. I'll get this right on the third take, I promise. <laughs> to the six-yard line. And Butterfield really had to unload that. They were coming that time with a corner blitz. Big third down. Butterfield straight back, big rush. Throws over the middle, caught by Harris. Harris going to be close. Going to depend on the spot. I think he got it. A very heady play by Mark Harris. He was at first thinking about trying to break it outside and get more yardage, but then he realized, uh-oh, I better get this first down, and he turned it upfield. Watch what he does at the end of the play. Stops right there. He starts thinking, I'm going outside. He said, nope, I'm not going to go that way. Let me get the first down, and he does. Eighth catch for Harris out of the shotgun. He throws to the tight end Clark to the 22-yard line. 105 and the clock ticking. Stanford going to hurry to the line of scrimmage. Not going to burn the timeout yet. They still have two remaining. They'll go out of the shotgun once again. 55 seconds left in the game. They're trying to get it to where Eric Abrams can have a chance. They throw again for Evans, and Evans fell to a knee. 
Now the clock will stop because it'll be a first down at the 26-yard line. Stanford going to hurry to the line of scrimmage once again with 48 seconds left. There's Eric Abrams hoping for a chance. Wisconsin having a tough time in their secondary. They're playing very, very loose. They will not bring pressure. They'll bring only the down four men. Now they bring pressure. And the ball is tipped. Clark didn't catch it, and it's probably the best thing that he did. If he catches the ball, the clock keeps ticking. Clock is ticking. They say complete pass. Now they signal to stop the clock. But now let's see. I think we're going to get a timeout, but they let a lot of time burn off the clock. They called it a complete pass, a gain of two, and uh, there again is an inexperienced mistake. Right. We'll take a break with 28 seconds left in a tie game. Wisconsin 24, Stanford 24. Back to Stanford Stadium for the conclusion after this. I'll show you replay when we can. 28 seconds left. Second down and seven, but that's really not a factor right now. Butterfield straight back under pressure, rolls away. Throws. Caught by Harris. Harris will stay in bounds, and now he dives out of bounds, but the clock will stop while the down markers are moved, but he did not get out of bounds. Harris thought he had a chance to pick up more yardage, and he was wrong. He should have gotten out of bounds that time to stop the clock cleanly and give his team some time to regroup. They're going to say he did step out of bounds. That was a 16-yard pass for seven They did. They stopped the clock with 18 seconds. He did get out. They go out of the shotgun again. Stanford still will need a couple of more first downs to get Abrams in range. Butterfield steps up, throws for Harris, makes the catch, turns it upfield down to the 41-yard line. The clock will stop again. While the chains are moving, I think Butterfield called the timeout, and I think the officials are going to recognize it. He was signaling timeout that his teammates were trying to wave him off because they're going to have to burn a timeout. Right. They did. They called their last timeout. Error in judgment. Right. What he needed to do was to allow the officials to stop the clock because of the first down and then maybe rush up to the line of scrimmage and down the ball. Then you still would have had one timeout left to use to get the ball in position for your kicker. Now Stanford has no more timeouts and they're on their 40-yard line. But a reminder to tune into the Press Box Show tonight for all of today's scores and highlights. Randy Sparaghi going to tell you all about week three of the NFL. It's night on the Press Box. Check local listings on your regional sports network. Again, that's inexperience, and we've seen that on two occasions now here. Eric Abrams uh, just hoping for a chance. Well, if he were to line up and kick it from here, it would be about a 57-yard field goal. Into the wind. Into the wind. That's really stretching, and I think you probably got to get another 10 or 15 yards for him to have a realistic shot at making it. And the problem now is you got to go to an out pattern of some sort where you can get the receiver to step out of bounds because I don't know that you could get up, even though the clock would stop if you make a first down, I don't know that you could get up, spike the ball, and still have time. I don't think you could get those big linemen down 10 or 12 yards and line them up and stop the clock by spiking the ball. I, I don't think there's enough time for that. Not the uh, the best clock management by Stanford the last two minutes of the ball game, Barry. So they will come now with a trips left. First time we've seen this set today. Butterfield looking to the sideline. Throws into traffic. And I'm not sure where he's throwing the ball. And a flag goes down. Big break for the Cardinal. It may be against Stanford, Barry. It may be a number 81, Andre Kerwin, who was pushing downfield. And if that's the case, that may move Stanford out of any chance for a field goal. I believe you're absolutely right. I, I think that that's what the call may be. We'll see it go either way. The Butterfield is looking all the way for Kerwin. And watch the end of the play. Look at 81. He pulls number 28, Sutto, out of the way so he can't intercept the pass. And that's going to be pass interference. Pass interference on the offensive team. The 15 yards in the previous spot. Repeat first down. So now it makes it all but impossible. Well, you can't even line up and attempt one from here. I mean, you could, but why would you? It'd be a 70-yard field goal. There's absolutely no way you can do that here. Stanford's simply going to throw up and hope for a prayer. And unless something strange happens, Barry, we've got a 24-24 tie. Of course, you and I both know we've seen some strange things happen in this stadium. <laughs> That's true. So Butterfield in trouble. 
Now he rolls away, just cranks it toward the end zone. He got it to the end zone. There's nobody there, and it's going to go incomplete as the clock runs out. Mark Harris down in the end zone. Incidentally, has not yet gotten up, but he does appear to be okay. And this game is going to end in a 24-24 tie. Not really a kissing your sister game. I think both teams can walk out of here with their head high. We talked about what a confidence builder this game would be for either team that won it. The fact is, nobody won it. But the other side of that coin, of course, is nobody lost it either. Wisconsin 24, Stanford 24. We'll be back with a final word right after this.